In this example, we will try to create an XML schema for a relatively more complex item. Uh, this is from archive.org. And in this collection, we have uh, items. Again, we have a kind of display title up here. And we have some description information here. And we have a producer element. We have the collection name information. And if you look at the collection name, we have a name. And also, this name is hyperlinked. So there's a linked information also captured. We have a producer uh, field, production company, audiovisual. Again, for the language and keywords elements, basically, if you look at the language element, there's a value and also there's a hyperlink. Basically, there's a link associated with this element, so we need to capture that link information as well. Uh, same thing for the keywords. So basically, we, we have a term and there's a hyperlink associated with that term. If you scroll down, then we have individual files. As you can guess, this is a relatively more complex uh, element because that individual files has some uh, child elements like movie files, image files, and information. And even those child elements have actually more sub uh, elements. Like movie files has file name, it can be multiple files. In this case, there's only one. And also, there is format information here and the file size as well as the excuse me, link for that file size. So we need to capture the format, uh, file size, and the link again here. Uh, same thing applies to others here too. So again, we can capture this link and uh, file size, that kind of information using attributes. So whenever we try to incorporate this child elements or attributes into an element, we need to convert its type to a complex type. And now we can go back to our Eclipse again. So this time we are going to create a new XML schema. Go to new Again, other XML schema, and let's name it Machinima Schema. Okay, finish. And again, target namespace, as you see, is Wikipedia. We can always change it to archive.org here. Let's go to design view. Okay, that's archive.org. Again, now we need to remember we, we need to create a root element, right? So in this case, let's create our element and let's call that element item. And we need to change it to complex type first so that we can start adding sub elements. And let's say this is item type. Double click on the item type. Now we can add uh, sub elements. Basically, we need to have a title, right? We need to add an element called title. If you look at our uh, item again, we have a title information here, and also we have additional information here. Basically, that one is producer information, so we don't have to have this one here. Basically, we need to capture the title. And we also need the collection name information. Let's create an item again. First, we start with this uh, simple element. And collection name. Then add another element that's called description. Other elements we have uh, producer, we have producer production company, okay. producer And 
now we have a language element. We have keywords. It's called just keyword. And we have individual files. Then later we are going to convert this to a complex type. We don't have to worry about the reviewer part, so reviews part, so we simply just focus on the elements uh, associated directly with the, uh, the item. Now we have this title, collection, name, description, producer, production company, audiovisual, language, keyword. So for the collection name, you may remember that there was a name, there was a term, and also there is a link associated with that. So we can incorporate the link as a either child element or an attribute. And I think attribute might be more appropriate in this case. So let's click collection name, do a right click, let's change its type and let's call it a new type and we can call it element type Okay, and for the element type we are going to incorporate an element basically this is going to be for the term and we are going to incorporate an attribute which is going to be the link so that we could capture both the name and the link. And we can use the same approach for language and keyword elements. So we can select the key, uh, language. Again, we can set type. We can we are going to do the same type therefore we don't have to we don't have to repeat the, these same, same attributes and elements. Can we can browse the element type. It's link automatically. So we can do the same thing for keywords. We can look at the source view and see how things look like. We have element type, we have a term and we have a link and we can see collection name and language and keyword or element types. Okay, now the next step would be is to specify a uh, focus more on the individual files part. Individual files Again, let's briefly take a look at it. We have a file name here, and that could be multiple files, but in this case there's only one. There's a file name, and that file name has a format, and a file size, and that file size also has a link, so there's a link here too. And same thing for different formats. Let's convert this one to a complex type first. So we are going to create a new type, let's call it file type. It's called individual file type. Okay. And that individual file type is going to have three sub-elements, movie files, image files, and information. We are going step by step, movie files, image files, and information. element which is going to be movie files image files and information okay. now these uh, each of these elements are going to be again uh, we are going to convert them to a complex type so that we could capture the information right click set type new and we are going to basically use the same type here for all of these and we can call them this time file type okay convert these as well then we are going to browse the file type Now we can st now we can uh, start identifying elements to associate with this file type. Double click on here. Now we have movie files, image files, information, and they're all file type. So now we are going to here uh, add some uh, elements, and we are going to start converting them to complex type too. So we have file names for each of these movie files, image files, and information. 
elements. So we are going to come here and as an element, let's call it file. And this file again is going to be repeating element because we are going to have format and file size and the link repeating for each file name, individual file name. So we are going to let's set this one to a new complex type, be specified file type, and let's call this one file. And double click on here. Now we are going to add an element which is going to be the file name. And also for each file name, we are going to have a format. So let's add a format element here. And we can associate file size and the link for each format as well as the format name. We have a snap hack. H264 for all of these individual formats and same thing here and thumbnail animated gives so we need to have that the term as well so we are going to again format so we're going to set this type to a new complex type because this how we are it's going to include all of those elements let's call it format type double click here and at element which first one is going to be the basically the term or we can call it name which is more descriptive and other one is going to be actual format uh, name uh, name for the format other one is going to be uh, actually we don't need a name we can simply don't need this element we can delete this and we need to incorporate attributes because we have the file name here and let's uh, add an attribute which is going to be link and other one is going to be the file size now let's save and I think we are pretty much also, if you look at the item type, basically we have all of these items, and we have here, and for the individual file type, get here, and we have file, we incorporate the file name here, let's say time travelers, we have time travelers here, and for the format, then it's going to be we are going to have the snap hack, file name, and uh, file size, the link here. So I think we are, this is the format name, which is going to be snap hack or other ones. And this is ready. I forgot to set the multiplicity for the file type here because we want this uh, file information repeating for these different individual files. So we need to set this file type here, the right here, the file element, set multiplicity, and it's going to be uh, one or more. And now we are ready to create our XML instance document out of this schema.